All right, Shalom, Shalom, first and foremost, just as always, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory, as always, unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahusha, Bahashim Rakak Radash, which is the Paleo Hebrew, the Rashwan Kodash, the Holy Tongue, for the one true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of His Son, the Messiah, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, being Yahweh Shai. Those are the only names in which salvation may be obtained, whether you have been given the Spirit to receive that knowledge or not. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone who have taught me this truth through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai and who do real well today. And a sincere peace, love, blessing, salutations. And to you hopeful members of the elect out there doing the best to make the calling of your election sure. May this video be edifying. And, uh, you know, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and just get right into it, man. All right, you see the title of the video. Um, you know, this is the ultimate underdog story, man. Okay. This is the ultimate underdog story. And when I'm saying this, I'm talking about the context of these scriptures, man. All right? The storyline of these scriptures. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse... Verse, uh, twenty five, it says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yeah. And things which are not to bring to naught things that are. You see? So the Heavenly Father chose the base things of this world, man. He chose the foolishness of this world. Why? Because this world goes against the grains of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. So really, if you're something in this world, you're a sellout to the Heavenly Father, man. That, that means you've, you've given league over to Esau, man. You've put your time, energy, and efforts into carnalities. Things that do not profit in the day of wrath, man. Things that do not profit in the world to come. You've put all your tokens toward a kingdom that's prophesied to be destroyed, man. You may as well jump into a time machine and go to, uh, uh, you know, World War II and go join the, the, the Nazis, man. When you know damn well they lost that war. In fact, Esau is still digging these Nazis up, you know, old-ass men out of uh, particular places of the earth and still convicting them, man. When really all they were doing was, you know, fighting for their, you know, for their people, you know. But the point being, man... <laughs> That, that whole system that they were setting up was, was, was put out, man. It came to naught. So all these different, you know, people that were high up in their system, man, they all came to nothing. And that's the same thing that's going to happen to those of this world, man. You see, the Heavenly Father chose the, the, the foolish things to confound the wise, man. Foolishness of this world, but wise in Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. You see, because if they're wise in this world, they would be spending all their tokens, time, and energy in this world. And people of this world will be looking at them and, 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 and holding them in honor, man. But since we have been given our tokens unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, we're looked at as what? The off-scoring of the world, as the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, tells us. Let's go ahead and grab that, man. This is 1 Corinthians 4 and 13. It says, um, actually, we'll go, let's go ahead and jump back a little bit. Verse 10, it says, We are fools for Hamashayak's sake, but ye are wise in Hamashayak. We are weak, but ye, but ye are strong, you see? So we're foolishness, we're fools in this world, but in Yahweh Shem Yahushai, we're wise, man. We're weak in this world. We don't look, you know what I mean? We, we don't got no, you know, some big arsenal of weaponry and, you know, like some kind of physical threat to Esau. 
but we're a spiritual threat, man. We are the only thing, hey, just like it read in that First Corinthians 1 that we were just reading, he chose the foolishness of preaching. This is the only thing that's going to take down Esau's kingdom, man. This is why the book of Thessalonians tells you that he will, he will uh, uh, destroy him with the spirit of his mouth, man. Letting Esau know what's to come. All right? Verse 10, it says, We are weak, but, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Right? We're despised of this world, but yet we're held in honor with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. You see? The book of Psalms tells us what, man? That the meek shall inherit the earth. That tells you it right there. So really, man, you got to learn to... to be a fool in this world to humble yourself down and really not give a damn about yourself in this world, which is why we're likened to what? Sacrifices, man. We are the sacrifice. You could be, you know, investing your grains in this world, man. But instead, we've sacrificed that. We've sacrificed this world in order to obtain one in the, in the world without end, man. In our world, in our system. You see, this is Esau's kingdom, man. You're over here selling out for a, a, a piece of a crumb from Esau's table when we own the entire table, man. Like that uh, saying that the uh, elder apostle Gabar had said, man. Um, you're passing up the, the bakery for a donut, man. You could have the whole bakery and just be making endless donuts. But instead, you're passing the whole thing up for some stale, old, rotten donut that's tossed to the side, man. Something that you could have right now just because you have the... Uh, just because you can see it and you lack the faith to, to see that, that, you know, if you be patient, man, you're going to have that whole bakery. You see, well, hey, man, the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai has, has caused certain of us... To realize that, man. So this prophecy is coming to fruition before your eyes. And we were warned of the hardships that we would take going coming out of this world, man. You see? Verse 9, it says... Or Salaki, well, we read that too. It says, For I think, I think that God has set us forth the apostles last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to the angels, and to men. Right? We've been made a spectacle before the whole world, man. You see? And this and uh, beginning with the apostles of old. But what did it say? It was appointed to them last to what, man? As it were appointed to death. And that's something you got to really think about, man. Every single one of the uh, uh, apostles died. They didn't receive that, that victory in the flesh at that day and age, man. We still had to suffer these curses. We still had to, the falling away had to take place. I, th I think the only one that wasn't actually put to death was uh, John the Revelator, who was banished to an island, man, the island of Patmos, which is where he saw the vision of, you know, the, the book of Revelations, man, what's been written, expounded upon all the prophecies through these scriptures. You see? And that's almost, that's almost worse than death, man. To suffer to be stuck on an island, just stranded out there for, for, for you know, till till your death, man. Anyway, verse uh, eleven it says, even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. Right. <laughs> These are the things that you have to go through to get to it, man. You have to go through it to get to it. You see, you have to go through these hardships. It ain't gonna come with no walk in the park, man. You see, a lot of these men were, were homeless, man. Yahweh Shai was homeless. He said the uh, a dove has a home, a fox has a hole, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, man. They said we have no certain dwelling place. Why? Because we're sojourners in this world, man. This is not our world. Micah 2 and 10, depart for this is not your rest. This place is not our rest, man. This place is our place of affliction. This is the rest of Esau. So let Esau have it, man. To hell with him. Because we know everything here is getting ready to be destroyed, man. Verse 12, it says, And labor working with our hands being revived. Look, man, we're over here working our asses off in Babylon. 
working, laboring with our own hands, even though we're supposed to be kings, man. As the book of, uh, of Ecclesiastes says, I see servants riding upon horses and kings and princes upon the earth, man. So he set us on the bottom. Again, this is the ultimate underdog story, man. Just like Ronald Reagan said, what will we do if the, the heavenly, or I believe that was Ronald Reagan, if I'm not mistaken, man. Well, he said, well, what will we do if the heavenly father, uh, uh, you know, sends his, his only begotten son to, to, you know, to return as, as described, right? But what if, what if he shows up in the appearance of a so-called Negro? The people that we've afflicted and harmed throughout the world, man, throughout history. Again, it's the ultimate underdog story, man. People that you've put on the bottom, that you've treated like shit, are about to be put on top. And that alone is going to prove the power of the Heavenly Father and and cause the whole world, as we've read in the book of uh, Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, to know exactly why we were put under the persecution of the heathen, man. Because they've they, the, the, the whole world is going to see the destruction of our enemies, not by our own hands, but by the hands of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai. Because again, in the flesh, we don't look like a threat, man. But in the spirit, we are we are the only threat. You see, this is the Book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. So that when they see the Spirit come upon us and us stand and and, 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 and raise this banner for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, fulfill this prophecy, man. You see, it's going to cause what? Them to be amazed. Them to be in fear. It says, they shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond that they looked for. You see, so they're going to be amazed at the salvation of Israel, man. It ain't going to be like what they've pushed in the media, what they've pushed in the mainstream breakdowns of religion, man. This white Christ coming down on the cloud with gums drop, gum drops, lollipops, and rainbows, man. No. He's going to be saving so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those Israelites who have repented and come out of this world that the world has demonized for doing so, man. For going out on the highways and the byways. I mean, like, these people, man? Verse 3, it says, And they, repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he who we had sometimes in derision. These are the people that we were messing with, man. These are the people that we were scoffing at. That we were talking shit to, man. These are the people that, that we didn't accept because they weren't accepting of the devices of this world. So if we were out there, man, you know, teaching some kind of blunt rolling classes or whatever the case may be, we would be accepted by them. If we were out there teaching Christianity, we would be accepted by them. But just as the scriptures say, Galatians 4 and 4, Am I therefore your enemy because of the truth? Yes, man. We are an enemy of this world, just as they are an enemy to Yahweh by Shem Shai because of this truth, man. It says, And a proverb of reproach. So they were all talking shit, man. What did they do? Verse 4. We fools. You see, now they're going to realize that they were the fools. Even though we were the ones that looked like fools. They are going to realize they're the fools. Accounted his life madness. Why? Because they accounted us our lives madness. Why weren't we running around to the same access of riot? Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? Why are we repenting? Why are we wearing fringes? Why are we uh, 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 wearing garments? Right? Why are we uh, uh, holding camp? Why are we just going along to get along? Why are we not taking this karagma and allowing Esau to kill us because of it, man? They might have thought Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego were fools up until what? They got delivered from that flame, man. They might have thought Yahweh Shai was a fool as he was being crucified. 
They thought Elijah was a fool, man. Until until the fire came down and consumed all them false prophets. The tables are turning, man. And you're going to realize, man, the Heavenly Father is getting ready to stop the mouths of all you scoffers out there, man. The Heavenly Father is getting ready to visit you, man. But we're dealing with the creator of all energy, man. The power that both kills and makes alive. The king of terrors as the scriptures describe him, man. He's going to afflict you in ways that you can't even imagine. This is the power that we serve, man. That's why, that's why we don't get worried and caught up in our emotions about having to defend ourselves, man. Fuck you people. The hell with you people, man. The Heavenly Father, the creator of all energies, is going to visit you and your household, man. Everybody that you care about, man. This is the same. The, the, this is what gave us the motivation to repent and come out of this world, man. To count our, our, our lives uh, 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 as nothing in this world to achieve one with Yahweh by Shem Yahushua because we're dealing with the creator of all energy, man, that can make you a. Uh, 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 make a, an example of destruction out of you and your household, man. Look at Korah. Earth opened up and swallowed him, his house, and his belongings with his children and wife, man. You fucking people think it's a game, man. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't. A, it ain't no game. You better learn why the heathen nations called him Alashadi, meaning terrible, demon-like power, man. This is therefore we have erred from the way of the truth you'll realize man is it but it's gonna be too damn late for your simple ass man it says and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us right the light of righteousness that didn't shine to you the heavenly father left you in your in your in your folly man while this this great awakening was taking place people going from what you israelites going from from these bywords to immortal, man. From rags to riches. From mortals to gods, if you will. Pursuant to the book of Psalms, the 82nd chapter. It says, And the Son of Righteousness rose not upon us. That's right, man. Hey, as the scriptures say, if, 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 the, uh, if they can't receive this gospel, they've been blinded, man. So, that, so they can't receive it. We worried ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction, right? You you took along with this world, took along with Esau, man. Yeah, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it, right? <laughs> they learned the way of Esau, man. They learned the way of this 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 Edomite, but as far as the ways of Yahweh by Shem Shai, they haven't learned a damn thing, man. going to bring what this to pass this is proverbs chapter one and verse 20 wisdom crieth without she uttereth her voice in the streets right that's where you that's where you're going to see us man in the chief place of concourse in the streets and the highways and the byways right that's where you're going to find wisdom. You ain't going to go find it with an Esau's indoctrinated school system. You ain't going to go pay for it, right, to pick up this or that from Esau, man, as we've learned to. It ain't going to be in the places that you would imagine it to be in in this world. It's going to be where you don't expect it. Why? Because the Heavenly Father's dealing with the underdogs, man. It's going to be out there on the highways and the byways where you'll be able to receive it for free. In the openings of the gates, in the streets, she uttereth her words. You can go to any main city, and you're going to find a camp. You're going to find the Israelites, man. There's no excuse. Verse 22, it says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make my words known unto you. So the Heavenly Father's poured his spirit out, man. He's caused his reproof to come out, his correction. So Israel could take heed and repent and come out, man. Verse 24, it says, Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. Right, so to those of you that didn't want to listen, verse 26, 
I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Hey, because you wanted to be focused on the on the you know those that are looked at with glory in this world. When the heavenly Father raises the underdog, man, and your calamity comes, the calamity of your master, who you set your 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 affections on. The heavenly Father said, "Well, I'm going to mock you, man." When your fear comes upon you, I'm going to mock you. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as a desolation and destruction as a cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, what are you going to do then? You, then you're going to turn and call upon the Heavenly Father. Then you're going to say, we're fools, man. These people were wise, but we were the ones that were fools, right? Then you're going to, then you're going to start seeking the Most High, right? Verse 28, it says, then shall ye call upon me, but I will not answer. The Heavenly Father is going to be what? Mocking you at your fear coming, man. What was all that energy, all that shit talking you had, man? They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me again, man. We don't, we, we don't need to get all worried about you people, man. At the end of the day, the Most High is going to visit you. Though we've been put on the bottom and many of you had... kicked us while we're down so to speak <laughs> the heavenly father has accounted every single kick to the slightest degree that you've given us man verse 29 for that they hated knowledge they did not choose to, that they would none of my counsel they despised all my reproof therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way so the heavenly father is going to give you over to it man you're going to eat the fruit of your own way Heavenly Father is going to destroy you, man, and be defiled, or so like be filled with their own devices, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Why? Because the Heavenly Father is going to be delivering those of Israel, man, the elect of Israel, real Israel, from the inside and the outside, man. the underdog so with that I'm going to go ahead and close it up man I'm going to say all praises honor and glory and be how about you shabbat shalom and the apostles and peace but blessings salutations under the election of the law